Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we wanted to go over retrofitting older designs with the new oxygen system. Now what we have here is actually my original, or rather first, uploaded ship design, our Deep Space Utility Carrier Corvette. Basically this is a completely self-operable ship that has a refinery assembler now. The newer version on the lower end here has oxygen of course added. This is the original up on the top here. Uh, it has obviously some point defense turrets there. The gist of it is basically that you use this to go out, explore, mine, and salvage. Now the first differences you're going to notice, uh, well, obviously, is of course going to be the the lack of a proper paint job, since I did not bother to line up the paint colors or anything with the new design. Uh, the first problem we ran into with it is that a lot of the older design. There. A lot of the older design, other than using the lights, which just bogs the system down, also has pretty much open slants of uh, ramps, elevator, or elevators, <laughs> ramps, staircases, and it just makes it really hard to redesign. Of course, it is uh, a bit more complex inside as well. So, what we had to do was figure out a way to seal this off compartmentally while still retaining access to all the different levels. So, of course, what I did is I just took the base design and I cored it out, deleted everything from the end of the bridge back to the landing segment here. So you can see it uses the uh, default miner, since this was actually pretty much my week one release when I first started playing. Alright, so on to the retrofitted version. We're using our SRMC Mark IIs. Since we only loaded the sloped armor thruster mod that I used for the original design, of course I wanted to use the uh, SRMC 3s or 4s at least if I use full mods with it. But basically what you'll see here is first the most obvious redesign is that instead of opening up as a uh, walkway straight onto the landing deck, we've actually elevated it and made it go straight into the uh, upper deck there. You'll see a few minor changes on the hull as well, a little bit of armor on top of the guns. Uh, let's go ahead and go in since we're trying to focus on how we retrofitted this to work with the oxygen system. We had to use a dual airlock system. Very basic. I uh, covered it in a previous video. And of course we have one vent up here. Now we did notice while going through this when we were only using one vent for the entire ship once we had filled all the holes in the hull, is that uh, it's either, or it could be a combination thereof, basically we had one vent and we had one oxygen generator filling the entirety of the ship up and it took about 15 seconds for that versus the normal three seconds that it takes to fill up most rooms that we've done otherwise. So of course we have dual vents here in the bridge, which is more of a cosmetic thing really than anything else. Uh, the bridge is completely sealed off by a single layer of doors in either direction. Now this opens up into our stairwell, going, well, obviously goes down once and then goes down again, and off into our side passages. Now this area I've left open for modifications, might need to put timer blocks up there to make the doors a bit more usable. But we have another vent down here for our central area, so this would fill up this entire area here. And then we go off to one of our side passages here, the stairwells that go down to the observation deck, which has dual airlocks on either end, and of course the one vent here. Now, vents facing down or from the side have no problem filling up through this armored slated window. If you have it on the bottom facing up, or rather the bottom in relation to where your gravity is, and of course this down here is gravity, as it will always be, but if basically if our gravity was going up from our current position, that, that would not work. That would not pressurize properly. I've actually submitted that onto the uh, Keen forms to see if it's either a bug or if it's a design feature. I had not heard back since so it's only been a few hours. Alright. A uh, little side note here, you'll see that the uh, observation deck has uh, merge blocks to connect other large ships. I actually need to cover this up here. What I've been doing is putting a little bit of extra armor. Oh, can't get that close. Alright, so we'll do it there. Over these conveyors. 
that way they you know can take a little bit extra hit in case of the shrapnel or enemy engagement rather than losing your conveyors now the uh, actual conveyor block versus the two tends to be a bit more cost effectively since the parts are cheaper to produce and the more expensive parts are well fewer used on the actual conveyor blocks that's why we went with conveyor blocks plus they do fill up the square that will actually count as a full square rather than the tube which of course you would need to insulate which just expands further now you'll see off to the nacelles with these passageways and a note on these we do have a few in the hull as well this is not a good idea for any ship that you expect to take fire at any ship that's designed for combat. You do not want a thin passage like this, not just because of the uh, lack of support, we're easily cutting off that nacelle right there, but particularly because if we lose pressure in this room over here, the reactor room, and we lose pressure in the nacelle, we have to close those doors and we are in a no helmet situation, we have no vents going in here to give us oxygen. So while that oxygen will remain, it will burn out. You'll end up using it up. So then you will, of course, suffocate and die. You're basically imprisoning yourself in these hallways. So, ideally, you want to do a expanded hallway where you have enough room to put a vent to, well, vent into it, basically. Of course, we have a, uh, there it is. We have a vent in each in the cell. So they're completely compartmentalized, and of course, the conveyor system, as you can see, that connects to the main cargo hold, the reactor, and everything else. Uh, this is another one of those hallways I mentioned. Uh, that was a failed attempt to ventilate it. Basically, the vent just takes up way too much space here. You can get by, but I mean, that's just really tacky looking. So it, it's more cosmetic in that case. And of course, if we go back to the nacelle passage, and so we want to put it here, it's going to be pressured, of course, because the other items, but. Basically, what we have is a situation where we can't get by. Okay. Alright, so we are going to... Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Okay, um, yeah. Let me explain our oxygen situation here. Alright. Oh, we have to go back to the reactor room, sorry. Tried to simplify the uh, interior design a bit as well, since it was rather complex in the first one. It's quite a bit more simple, but still a bit getting used to it. Alright, so this here is our oxygen generator. I am using a single oxygen generator located just off of the actual cargo hold, and of course reactors nearby as well. And then there's tubing going throughout the ship. Now, that single oxygen generator produces enough oxygen at a, for a fast enough rate that I don't have to worry about requiring another one basically. It took about five minutes for oxygen tank to fill up on it, but of course adding three more it filled up a bit faster. Now you'll see we have our two primary oxygen tanks here and they are routed not necessarily separately but off of the main line. I do want to do some testing to see if you can move normal cargo through an oxygen tank as part of a conveyor system just to see if that is possible or if it will stop. If not, I'll the test that yet. I was thinking about that earlier when I was putting these in. Uh, basically, we have these two here, and you can't see them in the cells, but we do have. Go to the bridge. List. We do have auxiliary oxygen tanks. They are in one in each in the cell. So if we turn those on, you can see they're located deep within the armor of the nacelles themselves. So if you do get shot off in this design on one of the nacelles that floats off, it has its own small reactor, it has its own battery backups, there's actually a gyro in each one, and an oxygen tank and its own vent. So what I've done here is I've tried to compartmentalize key segments to operate independently, and that's a design you want to include, not just for oxygen, but for anything really. If I did not locate all the batteries in one location, or the gyros, or all the oxygen equipment, uh, the oxygen equipment, of course, as you saw, was further back from the bridge. The primary gyro systems are also in the bridge. 
as well as the primary battery bank is hidden in the armored walls around here. You can see the two I've put up for cosmetics. But there's also redundancies in each of the nacelles, and there's an entire battery bank up here on the upper deck as well. So this means that anytime it takes uh, critical damage and loses a segment, say we lose this bridge segment, we can actually fall back to our redundant helm controls here. And we have power, we have gyros, we have oxygen. If we lose that oxygen generator and we lose the main tanks behind it, or above it rather, we still have the, the uh, auxiliary tanks and the nacelles which will feed in. We even have our backup power, of course, in the nacelles as well. And gyros, as I've stated, so that way we have an easy way to continue operation to at least limp out of any situation that could be hazardous or back to a friendly station or repair site or even out to a asteroid where we can mine the resources we need to get the ship operational again. Now that's uh, pretty much how I've gone about retrofitting a large ship to use the oxygen system and of course covering on a few key notes as to redundancies that you'll want to incorporate in any large ship design. And now I'm just running around like an idiot for no real reason. And anyways, I hope you found that video helpful and as always, have a good day.